I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, I wanna go over the watercolor effect. I'll show you the settings and how to troubleshoot it when things go wrong. This is a direct response to questions I've had on previous watercolor tutorials. And I also wanna reference this exact tutorial in future videos so we can all learn the exact settings. And you can do things where watercolor is in the background, like in the Eiffel Tower here. You could make the watercolor actually be part of the design, or we'll make this today in honor of the upcoming Easter holiday. We'll make an Easter egg where the watercolor is inside the art and also part of the background. So let's start, if you're gonna follow along, I'm on the A4 template. It's 210 millimeters, 297 millimeters. It's on the welcome screen, just choose A4. And first things first, you need to start with the shape. We'll use an oval as an example, and you'll apply the filters, texture, watercolor, and it'll come pretty close to our target here. But what often happens is it doesn't work that way. So I'm gonna go through slowly the settings and then we'll do the Easter egg. Okay, I just moved things up so we have our original page area here as a reference point. I found that starting small does help. Let's open up our fill and stroke menu, go to object, fill and stroke, you'll get your sidebar menu here. I'll choose circles and ellipses, I'll make an oval, relatively small compared to the A4 template there. It could be any color, but when you're beginning or troubleshooting, choose a darker color because the effect is easier to see. The two key points here, make sure you have no transparency. So this slider here, if you're on the wheel, you wanna be full opacity here, no transparency, and down here on this slider also, full opacity. Under stroke, make sure you have stroke off. With your object selected, the effect is found under filters, texture, watercolor, and this time it didn't work that well, so this is perfect. Let's bring it down to step two and see if we can fix this. One cool thing you'll notice, every time you drag it, it's going to resample and change the effect itself. So right there, you could just move it from side to side to see if it affects it at all. But if it doesn't, your first troubleshooting is under blur. So see how this works? If I reduce the blur, I get my, this is what they're sampling from, this watercolor swatch. If I take the blur all the way, you can see the outline of the original oval. And if I do too much blur, it becomes a little bit messy. Because we're gonna fine tune things, bring it down somewhere in the 60 range, 62, 65 maybe. It's okay if you see the swatch because we're gonna go to filters, filter editor to fine tune it. All right, the first time you open the filter editor, it's a little overwhelming because there's so many options, so many settings. Just focus on the top one, Gaussian blur. And whichever one is highlighted in blue, the adjustment area is down here. So for my standard deviation, I can change it with the plus minus. So I'm gonna go plus and it brings it all together. Let's make this bigger so we have a better view. You can also drag it, dragging it down too low, my swatch reappears. If I drag it too far, then the whole thing fades away. You can also punch in an exact number. I'll try 9.0, enter. And that's okay for now to keep a little bit of space there because we can fine tune more things at the next tab, which is called turbulence. On turbulence, you have to make sure you're on fractal noise. And the two areas you can adjust are base frequency. If I turn this one up higher, it cycles through different samples of your, yeah, that one looks good. What Inkscape is doing is rendering it slightly differently each time you click and change that base frequency. You might wanna have more of a bleeding edge here or a rich area with more of a fade down here. You'll know when you see the look you're going for. Octave seems to change the intensity of things. I have it set to five right now. If you slide the octaves down lower, it gets kind of blurry. And if you slide it higher, the intensity of the fractal noise really picks up. I'll bring it back down to the five just for a softer feel. The next couple tabs, you don't need to spend too much time on. For composite, the first composite be on operator over. For color matrix, add effect blend, and I wouldn't change any of these effect parameters down here, but what we do want is the next tab, displacement map. Make sure you're on blend, and when you go to scale, this slider, it will fill in any of these areas that were still vacant. 
I now have a clean watercolor effect. I like the way this looks to be thorough. The last four of these tabs, composite, again, be on blend, operator in. The second to last composite, same thing, blend, operator in. The last composite, operator arithmetic. And finally, blend is on multiply. All right, there's the rundown of the filter editor settings. Now let's play with the image itself. If I double click on it, you'll see a center X. That lets you move it around and change the actual rendering in real time. You can see where it moves. It really does give you infinite possibilities. You can move these nodes as well and drag it open. If you had a different type of shape and had more nodes, different angles to it, you can play with those and make adjustments as you want. I think I'll leave it right there. For some reason, if you wanted to not make changes and resample every time you move it, click on it so you have the handles and slightly resize it. And that way when you move it, it does not change. Let's go to some open space. And I wanna dye an Easter egg with you. I'll go back to my fill and stroke menu. I can change the color now, something maybe brighter. I'll go with that pink right there. Now with it selected, I'll do Control D to duplicate it. And see these right here? These are directionals. I'll flip it vertically first, then I'll flip it horizontally because I wanna have a two-tone egg. And the top color will be more orange or yellow. And here's the beauty of working with the vector. I can now change the actual nodes. I can even add another node. I'm on the bottom one here. I'm gonna to go to path, object to path, choose edit paths by node. If you click on one of the nodes, the handles show up. If I hold shift and get a second one, I can then add a node in between the two. Insert new node. So there it is right here. I'll click off of everything. The reason I did that is I wanna make a diagonal white stripe so I can stretch it better now. Because I cheated and I duplicated the bottom one, when I make changes to the top, it might still affect the look of the bottom one, but that's okay. If you don't want that to happen, rather than duplicate it and flip it, just start fresh with the second watercolor shape. But I'm okay with it. I'll go to path, object to path, edit paths by node. Now I can make that white stripe. That's good. It looks messy right now, but that's all right. Let's click over here and make our egg. Grab our circles and ellipses tool. I will make an oval, kind of a fatter oval. Change it to egg color, gray, white, so you can see it. Path, object to path, edit paths by node. If I grab my top node and bring it up, I get my egg. <laughs> That's good right there. Minimize it a bit. I'll change the opacity. I wanna see where it's gonna go. Look at that. That's gonna be a nice Easter egg right there. Do I want more pink? We'll go balanced. Back to full opacity. There's a couple steps here. I need to duplicate things because I wanna keep both of my watercolors as the background and fill in the egg. So I could do Control D to duplicate the egg. Come back for that. I will grab the top and the bottom holding shift so i have the orange and the pink i don't have this egg i'll do Control g which groups it Control d will duplicate it i will move that out of the way and we'll come back to that as the background this egg becomes my clipping shape with it selected i'll hold shift and select the grouped background beneath it object clip set <laughs> there it is. So there is our watercolor Easter egg and we don't have any vinegar smell or at least you shouldn't. But we're not done for a couple of reasons. If I take this out of Inkscape right now, there is transparency on it. So it might mess up when you bring it in someplace else. Let's duplicate this again and make this pure white and drop it beneath or on top so we can see where it goes. It should snap in. These are the hierarchy steps. I'll drop it down one step, then grab a no man's land and control G to group those two items together. Another small detail just for fun. I don't like how it's super, super crisp on the edge. So there's a way to change the blur without messing up the inside. Because if I do blur here, the whole thing gets ruined. You wanna go to filters, blurs, feather and you'll get this pop-up box with a strength bar. I have it preset to 0 0.30, and when I click Live Preview, see if you can tell what happens. Okay, here's our egg with the hard edge. When I click Live Preview, you see how it's very subtle? Apply, close. 
Now I know this is an egg, you know it's an egg because we made it together, but let's round it with a little bit of shading. The quickest way to do that is to take that original egg shape we had. If you're on fill, go to radial gradient. It looks like it went away, but if I hit pencil, I can then change it, bring it down here. See the shading I'm adding? It's super subtle, it may not even show up that well, but I'll bring it right over the top. And that is when it's white, we don't want it as a normal blend mode. We want to go to multiply. Off camera, I tweaked it a little bit more. Let's slide it back in. You can also change the slider at the bottom for the opacity. So that's with nothing. That's probably too dark. Something in between right there. Let's bring the backdrop. I bet it snaps into place and we'll camouflage. Let's see if it does. It does. Okay, so let's change the direction and now see what happens. I twisted it a tad. Let's widen it too. Maybe make that a little lighter. Something in 76, 79. All right, that'll do it. I hope this was helpful. I hope this answered some of your questions you might have on the watercolor effect, the settings. I want to reference this video in the future when we use this filter for other projects. If I could 3D print this and put them out in the yard for the Easter egg hunt, I would. But instead, I'll just record a video about it, share it with you, and hopefully we can all have some fun with it. See you next time.